Suffolk County Music Service presents The Sky, a how to play guide for Wicket students. Hello everyone and welcome back to your Wicket instrumental lessons. Today we're going to teach you how to play The Sky by Sarah Watts. Don't get your instrument out yet, we're going to listen first. And after that we're going to learn some of the patterns in the music and then we'll get down to some playing. Remember, you can stop and take a break at any time. We have lots of short learning bites for you, so you can even do this over several days and repeat bits as you practice them and get better. See you later. Before you play, we're going to ask you to be a musical detective. Listen to the music, think about it, and write down what you think. Pause the video at the end of the music and give yourself some thinking time. So what are we going to be thinking about? First, are there any repeated sections in the music? Things that we remember, things that have happened twice in a row. What happens in the middle? Is it different to the music at the beginning? And what's the music like at the end? Next, we're going to think about the rhythm. Are all the notes the same length or are some longer than others? Are there any silences, rests, where the instrument doesn't play? Listen to The Sky by Sarah Watts and remember, pause the video at the end of the music. Pause the video now and write down what you think. If you want to listen to it again, you can go back and do that too. Why not tell somebody at home what you found out and see what they think? So what have you found out? If you're listening really carefully, you might have found that this piece has three sections. The structure or how it's built, the form. The music at the end is the same melody as the music at the beginning. The music in the middle is different. We call this structure by a special name, ternary form. The piece uses different rhythms to make the music interesting. It has long notes, shorter notes and silences. And it also has something to shout out. Did you spot that in the introduction? Well done. Now let's learn about the notes which make up the rhythms. Now let's look at the notes we're going to be playing. We're going to be playing crotchets worth one beat, minims worth two beats, quavers worth half a beat each, and they usually come in pairs, and semi-breves, which are worth four beats. They are not coloured in, they have no tails. So let's start our click track 
we're going to clap along with the pulse. The word is walk. Clap along with me. Walk, 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 walk. Well done. Now we're going to do minims. Minims are worth two beats and the word is sway. Here we go. Sway, a, sway, a, sway, a, sway, a, sway, a, sway, a. Fantastic. Let's have a go at quavers. Word is running. Here we go. Running, 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 running. Good. Now let's have a go at semi breathes. Sleep, eep, 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 sleep, eep, sleep, eep, sleep, eep, I wonder if we can put those together. If we've got the count going on in our head, we're going to do some copy back patterns. Here we go, my turn first. Walk, walk, swear, a. Walk, walk, swear, a. Swear, a, walk, walk. Swear, a, walk, walk. Running, 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 running. Running, 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 running. Sleep, e, e, eep. Sleep, e, e, eep. Well done. Well done. Now it's time to get your instrument out and warm up. Or you can stop and then play another day. It's entirely up to you. Hello everyone and I hope you're all enjoying learning the sky so far. My name is Mrs Blaylock and I'll be guiding you through these clarinet instrumental parts to the sky so you may hear my voice instead of Mrs Rayner's every now and again in this video. Before we play through the sky we need to make sure we know what notes we need to play in the piece. These notes are E, D and C. If you're unsure about where to put your fingers then you can refer to the diagram on the screen. E, D and C should sound like this. Now we're going to use the notes that we know to learn the rhythm patterns from the sky. We're going to concentrate on sections A and C, the first and the last bits. We'll leave the middle bit till later. First time I do it, I'd like you to listen. And then after that, you can join in with me. I'll tell you when to stop. Here we go. Time to listen. Sway, walk, walk, sway, 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 walk, walk, sway, rest, two, walk, 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 running, rest, two, sleep. Two, three, four, running, running, here we go. Sway, walk, walk, sway, 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 walk, walk, sway, rest. Two, walk, 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 running, rest. Two, sleep. Two, three, four, running, running. Let's do it again. Sway. Walk, walk, sway, 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 walk, walk, sway, rest, two, walk, 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 running, rest, two, sleep, two, three, four, running, running. Well done. I think that's enough of that for today. So let's go to the next slide. Make sure that you are holding the clarinet correctly. Your left hand should be at the top of the clarinet and your right thumb should be lightly supporting the weight of the clarinet under the thumb rest at the back. It's important that we always try to make the best possible sound on our clarinet. So firstly, we need to ensure that the reed and mouthpiece are lined up properly and the ligature is secure enough to keep the reed in place. 
Tuck your bottom lip under so it covers your bottom teeth and gently place the top teeth down onto the top of the mouthpiece. Close your mouth fully around the mouthpiece so there aren't any gaps for the air to escape at the sides and blow enough air, but not too much, without puffing your cheeks out. The sky is broken up into three different sections and we're going to start by learning section A. It starts by silently counting one, two, three in your head and where beat four would be, you're going to confidently say, hey! And then you're going to count one, two, three again, but followed by a confident ha. I'm going to demonstrate by counting the beats out loud and saying the words. One, two, three, hey. One, two, three, ha. As soon as we say the ha, we count another eight beats silently in our head before we start to play. So use this time to make sure you are ready to play your instrument with your fingers ready on the correct keys so we don't end up starting late with the music. You've already got lots of hints and tips on the music to remind you what you've learnt already, so it's a good idea to pause the video here to read over those instructions as it will help you learn how to play this section of the music. You can always practice by clapping the rhythm and saying the notes, or even pretending to play the clarinet as you say the notes out loud so you have an idea of where and when your fingers need to move with the music. You can try to play the rhythm on one note before trying to play all of them. And you can always practice without the backing track at a slower speed until you're confident with the notes and rhythm before trying it at the original tempo. I'm going to play all of section A so you can hear how it should sound. So please feel free to just listen, clap or sing along. Or if you feel brave enough, you can try and play along with me. But please don't worry if you find it a bit difficult. Remember that practice makes perfect and it will get easier each time you try. Hey! Ha! Every now and again, we may have a few problems when we're practicing and it's difficult to know how to fix them. One of the most common problems is getting a few sneaky squeaks when you're playing, or sometimes getting no sound at all. If either of these things happen, then check the reed is in good condition. Any chips, splits or broken reeds won't help the situation. And make sure that the reed is lined up properly with the mouthpiece and ligature. Make sure you're using the right amount of air as you're playing as well. Too much will more than likely end in squeaks, and not using enough air won't make a strong sound. You also need to check that you have the right amount of mouthpiece in your mouth. Again, too much will likely cause squeaks, and too little won't allow the air to get through the instrument. Lastly, check that your fingers are pressing down and covering the correct keys for whichever note you need to play. Maybe you can ask someone at home to watch when you practice to see if you're doing any of these things, or perhaps you can look in the mirror so you can see what you need to work on. Fantastic! Keep practicing section A this week. Play it slowly at first and then get faster as you find it easier.
Next time, we'll add sections B and C, and then we'll play the whole piece through.